Hello fellow bike builders, this is Tony from Bike Berry. You can see that we got the Stinger here in front of us once again because, you know, it's a new frame and I'm just trying all the things out. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some upgrades. You can see I already put an aluminum head on it, so I'm already ahead of the curve a little bit, but I'm just kind of seeing how we can spruce it up from a stock engine kit. Let's roll. I thought since we're dealing with a retro themed bike, then we would kind of go for that old school chrome look. Well, as close as we can get to it. We have a silvered uh, tank here that is bigger than the one that comes stock with the engine kits. Uh, you can already see I put a CNC head on it, but I just wanted to show it here. But let's do some engine covers that are all aluminum, really polished up nice, and some looks like fish scale kind of grips. I thought these were kind of cool. Uh, also, give it a retro look with uh, an analog speedometer. And next, we'll do an HP carb because, well, I love an HP carb. The automatic choke on it is a dream to me. Great carb. We'll go ahead and mount one of these aluminum intakes on. I like it because it has the O-ring on there and you get a good tight seal for your carburetor. Well, let's start with the parts that give us a instant facelift. Make sure your gasket is in good shape. Nice. And when you go to put on your clutch arm cover, we'd like our Lucas red and tacky grease. Fill up that cavity. See that I painted this one black just for fun too. <laughs> we'll take it off of here and we'll get a nice shiny silver one on there. It's gonna be our uh, motorized bicycle chrome, right? We love aluminum in this game. All right, that looks pretty awesome. Woo! -hoo. Now, as far as the head replacement, yeah, I already went ahead and did that. So as you know, you just undo these four nuts on the top and take them off, put this new head on with the copper gasket, and then tighten it down to 10 pounds of uh, pressure per bolt. So that's all you do there, not a big deal. You can go and check out the uh, installation, the engine installation video for that whole process. Now this uh, fun one here. Oh yeah, I'll get a lot more silver on here. Nice. Need an extension on these. Get away from that chain guard. Well, they really thought of a lot of stuff on this bike to make it easy to work on. Everything fits pretty easy. I'm very happy with it. Check to make sure your gasket's all in good shape, then put your cover on. Oh, that looks awesome. It's fun dressing things up like this instead of having just the stock covers and all that. There we go. All right, that dresses things up nice. Kind of making my uh, cylinder look a little dirty when I painted it black. <laughs> That'll be good, that'll help things really stand out. Looks good, doesn't it? Well, let's get the cable added to the carburetor. Well, as I'm always thinking of things a little different, thinking of Maybe you, a lot of you guys already do this and you just didn't tell me, but I'm thinking of doing that so I get a direct pull. Before I was putting around the backside and maybe I caught somebody saying, hey, you're doing it, 
you know, wrong or something. But anyway, uh, sliding it like that and straight up. That makes sense. Why don't you guys tell me sooner? <laughs> Beautiful. All right, so let's take all this stuff here. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna go this way. Okay, got that on there. Take this. Did you see I got the cable fed through the top, poking out there. Gotta keep the gasket on correctly. Okay, I'm going to hold all that together. Slide that in there. Sorry, the boys are mowing outside, so you gotta deal with mowing sounds in the background, so. Which is appropriate for an engine video, right? Okay, putting it together. Getting the... Whoa, okay, things are happening. Slide the little boot down over, call it good. If you pull on the cable, working perfect. All right, about that tight. Just finger tighten the nut. That way we can get the uh, throttle grip on there. So remember, you gotta put the uh, other end of the cable in your throttle grip like that, in this position. So one thing we'll do is pull the fuel line off, drain our tank fully into the gas can, because remember, we're gonna change the tank out. So let's do that right now. So the easiest place to do that is, is just to take the fuel filter off here, stick the end of it in the gas can, and turn on the fuel. even take the gas cap off just to get a little higher rate of flow here there you go pretty constant stream all right then check when it's done and we'll remove the old one here this one's kind of stuck on here tight we got this shorty intake which is good This one, these are kind of tough, but you can do it. Woo! Right, Ellie? Right? Yeah. Equally hard to get on, so one thing I do is tap it with a rubber mallet. Nice. Get the carburetor on here. Oh, that fits a lot better. It's got a plastic insert in that carburetor. Push it on all the way. And then we'll tighten up the Allen wrench. I decided to bust out the keys for these upgrades. So it's best to... Uh, Position this in straight up, and then we're gonna strap it over here. I have these big giant straps, so I'm just gonna use them. You know, it's the old uh, use what you got. Next, we'll put on this gas tank. Very fun, a lot more fuel too. Let's uh, remove this tank. Get this new one on. And 
and use the same petcock. A little Teflon tape goes a long way. Always make sure that the opening is clear. You can hear the boys in the background building stuff, can't you? That's a good sound. As you'll notice with the smaller tank, the studs are smaller with this bigger tank studs are bigger so you'll have to get additional nuts and washers to do the method that I'm doing so I'm gonna put nuts all the way down so that the tension is pulled just on the stud not on the tank itself because where these leak and you get problems is where it pulls through here from vibration and all that over time so we want to totally bypass that as much as possible by just putting the stress on the stud and we'll place it right on to the bracket. The washer, lock washer, nut. Oh, nice. We're brightening things up. Look at that. That's fun. I love this hobby. It's <laughs> so much fun. Next up, let's put on our old school speedometer. The one thing you'll need to do is shape the bracket to the handlebars. So you're gonna wanna push it around, kind of get nice and rounded. Remember the stamped metals threaded. So this one, because the handlebars want to hit the tank a lot, because whenever you stop, because the forks are so far out, the uh, Handlebars want to fall to the side. So you want to make sure this is high enough that it doesn't intrude. Put it level like that. So the ends that fit here and here, here and here, are different. Like that one will screw on there. But you'll see that it's too small to screw on here. Or this one. Going fine. Now that you have your speedometer mounted on your handlebars, you're going to want to do it on the right side just to be sure. See how the cable stretches all the way down? <laughs> it's exactly the right length. All right, look in on the back side of it and just make sure everything stayed together. There's like a, uh, you know, a ring, circular ring clip that holds all of these parts together. So once you have your, you know, the little tab bent over, it'll stay. Uh, I haven't really had any trouble with these. I have, I've had one on, a, on the uh, black bike for a long time. As far as on the handlebars, you know, you're gonna, you're really at the limit of this cable and this bike likes to as soon as you stop the handlebars go wham right so you want to make sure that this is you know gonna not interfere and get knocked off by the gas tank so mine's gonna go rub kind of rub on it a little bit but i'm gonna work um on making sure that it stays on that side when i'm parking it so that way i'm not uh wrecking the cable or this mount or anything like that uh, sits on the ledge of the headset here. So that helps keep it in place also. All right, here's our old school dress up. So we wanted kind of a more of a retro chrome look with a analog speedometer and all that. But first of all, let's just check out 
these covers. So they're a machined aluminum cover. They look awesome. And then we got our machined aluminum head that gives a lot more cooling. We did a video way back and it talked about this one really being the best one. We have the numbers to prove it. Uh, an HP carb, which I like for the automatic choke. And so it's, it's definitely a step up mostly for that reason for me. Then around the other side, we've got the aluminum covers here. This oh, it just looks so good. <laughs> so fun. It has a retro feel to it. And then a much bigger gas tank that's, you know, got a silvered kind of chromish look to it. And my favorite is the fish scale aluminum grips. I think they just really have that retro vibe to them. But I love the uh, speedometer too, the square type. I hadn't really used it before and the cable fits exactly on these long chopper forks. So there you have it. We've got an updated, upgraded chopper stinger. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this dress up video. So in future episodes, I'm gonna show you how to modify everyone's favorite exhaust to fit the stinger. Keep an eye out, let's roll.